If you want to channel, become a member here over at Subscribe, start joining the Odyssey and the Rumble. So Hogwarts Legacy has trans characters, and SJW still hate J.K. Rowling, which is why you should never, ever try to uh, placate them. So what happened? Well, the Hogwarts, I guess this is the character, Legendary, or Legacy game, has got a trans character who sells broomsticks and butterbeer or, or something. And someone on, on Twitter is, is starting to go through, they hate J.K. Rowling so, so much. And they're going through all the consistencies of her world building for Harry Potter, which, keep in mind, is, is a kid's book it's for i don't know what the age ranges are yes adults can read it including teenagers and it's good but you know it's it's like it's the hobbit it was the hobbit it's not um it was not lord of the rings and so there's and like did she set out to create this this whole universe or did she just set out to build this kind of hogwarts university thing where the, the kids are going to do their simple mission and then because it caught fire, it's like when they have to build a whole surrounding logical universe. It's like they're she's just it's just a story. They're just doing the best they can. Like she had no idea what it was gonna turn into a billion dollar industry, which is exactly what happened. I mean the thing is most people writing books, you know, most books obviously fail. Like with this book, she probably knew she had at least some sort of hit on her hands. But um like there's hits and then there's you know what what uh the Harry Potter book like the books themselves were monster monster hits being made into movies is obviously the next level but like the books alone were you know the biggest hits in in a long time so uh i mean but this is this is why you like you never they will just never they'll never they'll never let up they'll never end it's it's there's no point in trying to to uh to deal with them so uh, the weirdos at the Mary Sue are still outraged. Now, um, usually I go like, are they really outraged or is it pseudo outrage? It, you know, is it just virtue signaling for attention? I will say that the, the writers at the Mary Sue are a different kettle of fish. And this guy is using some kind of pseudonym, which obviously is, is fine. Um, for the Mary Sue, when, when no one else does, which is okay, but it feels like it's someone else who's writing for the Mary Sue who... This person grinds their axe about J.K. Rowling just nonstop, and even the people in the in the Mary Sue comment section are like, "Okay, enough with the J.K. Rowling." And then someone points out, he goes, "You know, you're just bringing attention to this video game to people who probably wouldn't have known about it beforehand." It's like, was that your intention? Because I mean, they kind of did that with Donald Trump in in 2015, 2016, when they started they started talking about him like so much, and you saw the media response to him, and then you look in the media, and there are a bunch of weirdos. And you look at Trump, it's like, yeah, he might be a weirdo also, but he's definitely less weird than the media. And it's like it's a case of oh, he has the right enemies that people elected Trump. So anyway, by all by all means, the uh, this uh, Hogwarts legacy is is going to do just fine. So, um, but the thing is, like, um, this might not be pseudo outrage. Like, they might actually be this this nuts that where this actually matters to them, whether or not somebody plays a video game, and they really hate they hate it when they don't have control over people is probably more important. I mean, they would there would be nothing that pleased them more would be if uh, nobody watched the game, and they're trying to compare it to Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. He wrote a series of books, um, decades ago very successful books and then decades later they try to turn it into a movie and the movie didn't do well and there the SCW is going oh it's because he's istophobic at the time when he wrote the books and and that's why the, the movie cancels like the the movie came out way way too late it was too far removed from the energy of the books um compared to the movies like you would have had to re, re it, it's just it's got to be a little bit closer in time and and Ender's Games were successful books but they weren't like they were successful books within the science fiction community. They weren't like Harry Potter, like nothing compares to Harry Potter. Anyway, so to think anybody cares about a video game at all is nuts. Play it or not, assuming you have the computing power, it needs a four gigabyte uh, dedicated video card, which is, I've been looking for computers, right? And it's not, that's not your basic internet machine. That's, um, that's pretty decent. Um, I wish, like, if somebody live streaming, if they tell me what the minimum requirements are for, for live streaming, like, do I need four gigabyte video card, or can I use, like, that's a video card, it's not an onboard, the motherboard, like, most, most basic machines are gonna have, like, 128 megabytes of onboard video RAM. Anyway, so the SCWs and Mary Sue and Twitter are upset that the game has so much interest, and it has a ton of interest, because people just don't, they don't care about all this. I mean, they see a game. They like the Harry Potter universe. They don't care about J.K. Rowling. They, it's like she's not writing the game herself. Uh, 
they're um they're they're upset about the interest and and like on Twitter it's there's a phenomenal amount of interest and, and, and a lot of it is just tweaking the SJWs so who have their nose bent out of shape. Now it's the thing I can say when I say the left can't meme. I mean they can't summarize an argument and have it convince somebody and to join their side at the end of the argument. So they usually try to censor and deplatform the opposition as much as possible and make their arguments as convoluted as possible. You know they're they're quoting like I don't know. Nietzsche and Engels and, and Lenin and just using as many $2 words a, as they can. But when you, you start breaking it down and you sum it up and you go, oh, but your argument is actually bad. It's based on a, a false premise of, of human nature. And they look at you like, no, no, you just don't understand it. It's like you're saying things that are not in accord with reality as we understand them. Humans hate each other and everything you're saying is, is wrong. Anyway, um, but, you know, it's like the right can summarize things. The right really can meme. Like, there really is meme magic, which is, is fascinating. It's like, why do you think Stone Toss is so incredibly powerful? So they want people to, and why is so many people are triggered at Stone Toss? They want people to be upset at, at though I will say there are some left wankers on Twitter who, like, I know Stone Toss is a Hugo Boss or whatever, but this 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 was a pretty good comic. Every once in a while, he does. He just knocks it out of the park. So they want people to be upset at JK, but then when people ask why, it starts. To, it feels like a chatbot, you know, the artificial intelligence, the whole dialogue loop. They say that she's istophobic, but they try to quickly deflect away from what exactly. Listen, believe, bigot. It's like, well, doesn't that work two ways? They try to deflect away from what exactly she said to just focus on their opinion of the conclusion instead of the you know issue issue analysis aspect of it. They just go, oh, she's phobic. And then when you kind of press them on it, they say, well, you should Google it for yourself. Because, I mean, it's like, well, we're discussing this right here and now. Why don't you summarize it in, in 280 characters? Um, because the actual thing they're upset about doesn't really warrant this level of response. I mean, the response you see from Twitter people is, you know, they are, they're always the ones telling you to touch grass. And then you look through their tweet history and how many, how how off, how, how, um, how online they are, like terminating online. Like, you spent all Saturday online on twitter you didn't you didn't go outside you didn't go for a walk like you were just you're on twitter i can i'm looking through your tweet history it's absolutely insane anyway um because the actual thing they're upset about it's like you shouldn't be this upset about something on, on twitter the thing is they don't want to relitigate the issue because your findings may differ because they're crazy people and we're mostly not they just want you to accept their conclusion and not buy the hogwarts legacy game but when you get to the core of it, it's that J.K. said that men and women need their own safe spaces away from each other, which is a pretty reasonable thing to say. But that's not good enough for SJWs who want men and women together because they're Bolsheviks who try to turn everything upside down and destroy any stable system. They're they're pretty well famous for it. That's the whole concept of um, of you know critical theory, Frankfurt School, Saul Alinsky type of stuff. It's why they use the bullshit uh, technique of creating these terms uh, as shields. They're nonsense terms, all the istophobic stuff, which it's all a recent invention within the last hundred years, because they can simply raise these Marxist shields anytime anyone disagrees with them. It also gives validity to the whole concept. It assumes it's real, and it, you never have to actually litigate it, which is why it's a good thing to normalize terms like anti-white racism or Christophobia. Just keep using them. They will eventually spread and catch on. Uh, plus, it's amazing to see how far they'll go to degrade and dehumanize European people with their europhobic hatred. And it, it, that also tweaks their nose out, out of shape a little bit, and it's a lot of fun. You just have to say it sincerely and take things ser seriously and always appeal to emotion. I feel these things are valid. I feel I'm marginalized and oppressed and disenfranchised and othered. I'm feeling the hatred right now from this anti-white racism. And you can see the steam just comes out of their freaking... Um, free let's get this um so maybe in in this case rallying a phobic uh, in intolerance uh, they really don't tolerate diversity of thought they want to remove our free speech right now and their excuse is that if they don't act as our masters now then we might think and speak of ideas in the future that they find offensive so they had better police our speech right now if they don't like Harry, the Harry Potter video game, they just don't have to p play, you know, different strokes for different folks, but that's not enough. They don't want anyone to play it. They want to silence JK because she has danger, dangerous wrong think because she feels that men are not women. We're at a point where the objective truth is offensive 
if the left redefines words and they don't have the same meaning to them and to us, that means we're speaking different languages and we got to translate to each other on the fly. And, and they're going, no, 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 your, your definition is not valid. But, but, you know, but there are definitions. You have to accept that they are how we see the world. We have different worldviews on this. Human history has been rolling along for millions of years, but suddenly because the cultural Bolsheviks wanted to destabilize the nation, they started pushing this BLT stuff. No, oh, no, it's totally organic. It's not a phase, Dad. No, it's it's a phase, and it's it's cultural Bolshevism. You can look throughout history to see examples of it. I actually did a video on this on uh, on Odyssey and Bitchute about some of these Frankfurt School critical theory professors who were pushing this. If you read about the people behind this, you would understand. You would judge a book by its cover and definitely throw this one away. They created most of this, and they started pushing it in the West as hard as possible. No, it's not organic. It's just another tactic to lower the birth rates of the people who are susceptible to the messaging and destabilize the society, which it absolutely has. If you look around, what do you see? You see a lot of confused kids who are seeking attention and are probably going to wonder about some of the decisions they made a decade from now. They look back and they go like, why didn't our parents stop us? Why did our teachers encourage these kind of atrocities? Why did the mainstream media culture encourage this? And it's like, well... Yeah, it's a, you're gonna you're gonna have some questions in a decade. So the thing with SJWs is you never apologize to them. You never try to meet them in the middle. They can meet us if they wish. I remember when Zach had raised some money for some SJW BLT project. I wanted to throw up. But nothing against them. It's just because there's no point in trying to be nice to Virtue Signal. There's no point in doing it. They don't understand it. If you're dealing with people that you can um, you can never have a satisfaction and accord with them because they continuously move the goalposts. There's no point in trying to deal with them at all. And the good thing is most times you can actually avoid dealing with them. I know J.K. Rowling is not designing the game. There's no need for her to have any involvement. She created the universe. The game guys can read the books and they understand it's not that deep. It's just a simple story done really well. Now, the funny thing is J.K. is not against any BLT people. That's the... Uh, virtue signal they have uh, that's the um straw man they have built up in their head because they need a reason to be so outraged at her that they threaten her with um all kinds of acts of of violence and other things they threaten to struggle snuggle her um some of the things they say like you look at the people saying it and if you're on the left you look at this and like you guys are aware of the optics of this like you're threatening to struggle snuggle and then delete jk rowling because of her opinion on the internet that men need men and women need separate spaces that women need separate spaces from abusive men and you're threatening to struggle snuggle her because of that it's like but they don't get it because i mean there's a lot of mental illness on twitter um so she said um you know separate spaces yeah everyone agrees with that but that doesn't mean that she's against the existence of these people if they want to dress how they want to dress or whatnot Few people are actually against them. As long as you don't you don't tell other people what to do, you know that means includes compelled speech. You can't tell people what your pronouns are because your pronouns are tied to your sex. Like they pick the the speaker picks the observer who observes the objective reality picks your pronouns because it's it's sex based. They're not opinion based on how you feel. You know you have a different worldview and it, like ultimately. If you're in a situation where, where no no externality is forcing you to speak, like in a workplace environment, you're just not going to be around each other because the worldviews are too different. And, and like, I, it's not even the worldview. I look at them and go, oh, you, you're brainwashed by cultural Bolshevism. No, it's not. It's not a phase. Yeah, it is. It is. It's like you weren't. Were, where was this 50 years ago? Oh, well, it's just natural, organic. No, it's not. Because, again, like you can look at the people, the professors who um, push this. It's not organic. And the thing is, there's probably a lot of, you know, oh, never mind. Um, there's probably a lot of the BLT people themselves who don't understand that it's not organic, that this is a, a work, you know, wrestling. Uh, it's, it's The whole thing's a setup from the start. But that doesn't mean, like, people are not going to ignore reality. People want separate spaces according to the sexes. And, and in, 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 in uh, criminal law, there's like a presumption and a burden shift when if you've got like men in the women's room and something happens, it's like before all this stuff happened, it, it might be a presumption that, well, why are you there in the first place? You know, it's like you, you were probably up uh, in there to commit a crime. And so now things are a little bit different. It makes it makes that issue harder. So the example they bring up is JK started a trauma care center for women, and the SJWs got upset about this because it excludes men, 
but there are already trauma centers for both sexes, and the women were uncomfortable being treated and around men, especially when they were victims of male violence. So JK, you know, fair enough, right? I mean, most reasonable people would understand that. So JK started her own trauma center, and it's the interesting concept of borders, nationalism, and globalism of drawing a circle around a group and saying, this is us, you're not us, we're us, we're different. We are this discrete entity with our own um, beginning and end, and you do not, you're not in this area. We have an identity, you're not within that concept of what we consider us. It's a fascinating concept because it's an argument whose logic can be extended outwards to many other things and identity groups. The left is invasive. The idea that a group identity would form and excludes them terrifies them because their modus operandi is to infiltrate, subvert, control, corrupt, and destroy, then move on. But if you gatekeep from the start, they just say that, well, our group is not for you. We don't want to be under SJW control. We're autonomous. The whole concept has deeper implications, which is why the turf war issue, uh, T-E-R-F, is something that I keep my eye on. And like I said, the, the, one of the earlier videos is that it forces the feminists who would ordinarily mostly be on the left into something of a right-wing conservative position because they're trying to conserve something. The concept of, I don't know, womanhood, of, of the sexual dimorphism, of, of this concept of, oh, suddenly we do need walls. We do need limits to say to start excluding people where before it was... Um, I forgot what you called it. There's this type of feminism. It's just like, just I mean, feminism itself is a Bolshevik um, creation and always been controlled. And then they create they, they came up with another version of it was, I forget, which is even more nonsensical. But, you know, by all means, accelerate. That's why, like, like on this issue, issue, I'd have to support the um, the T aspect of the BLT. Hey, you want you want men and women's sports? By all means. By all, why are women in sports anyway? Why are women in college anyway? Should be home and married, having kids, right? I'm like, let's let's totally reformat this society while we're at it. I mean, you know, it's like the accelerated to destruction, so you can you can uh, fix things in the rebuilding of it. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks to everyone over at Subscribestar. I think I'm gonna do a video on Subscribestar next because um, some Comicsgate folks have been having some issue with uh, Patreon, where Patreon <laughs> is telling people to delete tweets. That's friggin' bizarre. Anyway, I will see you guys all next episode.